Hi, I'm Keith Gosland. I'm Linda Quinlan. I'm Ann Charles. Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. We're taping on Tuesday, May 3rd, and we'd like to acknowledge that we're in Montpelier, Vermont, which is unceded indigenous land. So now let's turn to Keith. And, and this week's trivia question that I already said, people should know the answer to this. We didn't. No, we didn't. But we'll explain at the end. So May is Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And this <coughs> was the first out LGBTQ plus person elected to the U.S. Congress. But bonus points if you remember the year. <laughs> Good luck with that. So events. And you know where I'm going to start. You're discussing and discussing and discussing. Yes. Women's discussion group is still meeting. Book you, discussion group is meeting. Yep, and you can find it all on Rainbow Umbrella, Central Vermont. All righty. So May 14th, Saturday it's night. Birthday. My birthday. To celebrate your birthday, get out your dancing shoes because <laughs> it's the 27th. Winter is a drag ball oh. at higher ground. And... This is sponsored by the House of LeMay. Now, this is a rescheduled event, so if you happen to have tickets from the previous date, they're still going to honor them. But if you didn't get tickets, you still got a chance. Our friends in East Montpelier, Fox Market, they bought the building. Good. Nice. And they said they did, did it to ensure that there will be a community home for years to come. Good. And so to help them celebrate, on Thursday, May 19th, they're doing drag karaoke. <laughs> it kind of scares me, but from 7 to 9 p.m. But also on May 19th, from 11.30 to 9 p.m. at El Gato's at the Burlington locale, it's Pride Eats. 10% of all their proceeds goes to the Pride Center of Vermont. Mm. And of note, the Pride Center of Vermont's online auction ends, if you're watching this on Saturday night, tomorrow. So if there's something you're interested in, get your bid in now. May 21st is Community Planting Day at the Star Farm Community Garden in Burlington. Now this was a joint- It's not nude gardening. I know there's a day for nude gardening. You, you promised that you wouldn't National share that. Nude Nude, Nude Gardening Day. Uh, for our next show, I'll look that up. <laughs> and we'll see if we tell you locales. Uh, no, this was a, a joint effort between the Pride Center of Vermont and the Burlington Parks Recreation Waterfront. And it's to create ongoing LGBTQ plus community gardening space. Mm -hmm. So this is something that will continue year after year after year. Okay. So and that, that felt kind of nice. Yeah. The 21st is also Queer Youth Summit. This is Outright Vermont's mm -hmm. annual event, 10 in the morning to 8.30 at night. It's going to be at the Brattleboro High School. They're going to have a queer prom. <laughs> Good. Yeah, registration is open, so if there are GSA's youth who want to attend, now is the time to sign up. They're also looking for volunteers, you know, people who are willing to go in and help set up, serve lunch, help deconstruct, just be the, the handy person at need. Okay, the biggies coming up are Central Vermont Pride. Right. And I'm told there might be an event in the planning that might have to do with poetry and, you know... Other possible activities. And writers and... It could be comedians, too. We're looking at comedians. And so a devious person could be working on that. Yep. But on Friday, June 3rd, is the free concert of the Vermont Symphony Orchestra. And it's at the Episcopal Church here in town, 7 o'clock. And I'm told that the Vermont Symphony is going to focus on queer composers. Good. It isn't just That's that nice. they're, it's not that you're, they're just doing this free concert. 
They're focusing on our communities. I wish and they were doing show tunes. Stephen Sondheim. Yeah. Could, it could happen. I haven't heard that it's being, you know, a narrow vision. Um, but also, it, that's Art Walk. And they're looking at an LGBTQ plus theme as well. And then there is, both on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Shakes Queer is doing their Romeo and Juliet Friday and Saturday at, at the Plainfield Opera House. Sunday afternoon is a matinee at the performance space in Hubbard Park. And then on Saturday, June 4th at 11 a.m. is the opening of Rainbow Bridge, mm -hmm. which is a LGBTQ plus community center. Your calendar is getting full already. Mm -hmm. In Barrie and yes, Linda, they're they're going to be offering you know support groups and speak outs and healthcare services, and they have a truly impressive board of directors to start with and service providers. So, wow, th this is looking very interesting. But also on that day is the festival on the June fourth Saturday, mm -hmm. is the festival on the State House lawn. You know, starting at noon, carrying on. Toussaint is supposed to be the MC. Music, hopefully some poetry there as well. Just a chance for us to spend time with each other. Mm -hmm. So, And I haven't heard that they're planning any kind of speeches or whatever. This is truly a festival. And then the following weekend on June 11th. This is the Berry Pride Festival, and I still haven't seen a lot of details, but there are organizers in Berry that want to do something in downtown during the day mm -hmm. for visibility. Then Shakespeare is also doing performances there. And they're going to do the Central Vermont Drag Ball at night. Preceding it, though, is a come on in, we'll have a drag closet and emoji will be here and give you tips on how to dress up. So, and and on our next show, I'll speak more about... Into the future. Well, I was going to say all of the other Pride Days that are sh yeah. popping up. There are activities planned for Rutland, Bennington, White River Junction, the People's Pride in Burlington, so we'll have more details on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I've taken too much time already. No, you, well, you know. <laughs> you have to keep up. You'll, you'll cut me off if need be. <laughs> yes. Well, I have a story about Ellen DeGeneres' and her coming out. Uh, Rights of Nature Law Clinic Faces Transphobia Allegations. Progressives has been, have been begging conservatives concerned about online censorship to join the fight to break up the biggest tech companies. Now those liberal activists are wondering whether to take on an ally with a separate agenda they hate, the limiting of trans and gay rights. So we'll see if they, what they do with that. Um, Apple is quietly mobilizing, we'll have more on that. Director Kay Lynch says she was opened up to horror by Carrie. We'll have more about that. Remember Carrie? I love that movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Activist and author Patrice Cullors calls for resistance uh, in corporations. Oh, well, anyway, what, she's, what she wanted to do was make sure that, you know, uh, she's the queer founder of Black Lives Matter movement, and she cautions against getting caught up in the commercialization of pride. Oh, so yeah. she wants to remind queer people this month to join the larger resistance movements across the country. Oh, yeah. So I there we go. Behind that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the director, Juan Diego Solanas, of Top Down on Netflix, documentary about queer serial killer, talks about how John Gacy crimes stretched far beyond... Chicago Killing Grounds. <coughs> Excuse me, he's doing a documentary because the generation isn't familiar with John Gacy. I don't mm. know if that's important or not. But <laughs> well, if, if we were going to do LGBTQ plus history, so, I might opt to start someplace else. <coughs> well, there's Jeffrey Dahmer, too. That's another Moving one. Moving on. 
A Minnesota <laughs> lesbian has labor pain, but it doesn't stop her. We have a picture of her. Erin May Quaid is part of the Democratic Farmers Labor Party, where she spoke 24 hours before giving birth. She's running for the state senate in Minnesota. So. Justice Department is hoping to stop Alabama's trans health care bill. The department filed a motion to intervene in a lawsuit against the ban and asked the court to keep it from becoming law and going into effect. <coughs> a teacher, Calvin Hillisdale Land, Hillisland, in North Dakota, with 30 years experience and just before he's about to retire, is coming under fire. A bigoted letter distributed to a group of trans high school students went public on social media. He is their German language teacher at Watertown High School. So he's going to get the boot. For, is he? Yeah, for just supporting. Just retirement. Yeah. Kansas anti-trans bill officially dead. The state House of Representatives has failed to override Governor Laura Kelly's veto. The vote was very close, but fell short of the 84 needed. Good. Biden's nomination of Aina Rees, R-E-Y-E-S, if confirmed, would be the first out lesbian and Hispanic judge to serve on the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia. It's probably Reyes. Maybe. R-E-Y-E-S, yeah. A bisexual student and Brigham Young University student found a way to show her pride at the school's graduation. Julian Orr opened her graduation gown to reveal a rainbow flag stitched inside by her sister. And I have a picture of, of her. She's happily opening her gown, and there's the rainbow flag. She knows how to accessorize an outfit. I know. <laughs> Damn. Kansas lawmaker objects to huge transgender woman in the bathroom. Representative Cheryl Helmer falsely claimed that trans people are predators and denounced gender-affirming surgery. She objects to sharing the bathroom with her transgender colleague. So there we go. Matia Roach is a lesbian super champ on Jeopardy. Another. Roach is 23 and has already gotten onto the list of Jeopardy records as she is 8th on the all-time consecutive games list and 10th on the all-time now uh, new tournament cash winning, winnings. So she'll probably be up against, uh, mm -hmm. what was her name? Amy Schumer. Amy. Yeah. yeah. Amy Schneider. Amy Schneider. Sch yep. That'll be interesting. We'll have to watch that. And Jim Baker. You remember, all remember Jim Baker. And we right? all discussed Tammy's death and everything on the show, yes. <laughs> Is claiming that preachers are being killed over Don't Say Gay Bill. I don't know where he's getting By his whom? information. Tammy I told don't know. Him. Tammy By told gay him. people are killing preachers? Yeah, that's what, they, that's yeah. what they're saying. So... Uh, a man threatened to bomb Merriam-Webster offices over their definition of female. David Hansen was charged in Springfield, Massachusetts. Bridgerton star Golda Rochevel said that a lesbian director told her to stay in the closet, but they didn't say who that lesbian director was. Isabella Fiera stars in Crush, a new queer Hulu high school rom-com. And I think we'll move on to Anne, and I have some more stories, but we can get to them after. So, Anne, what do you have for us from around the world? Well, I have a lot of news. And remember, you're supposed to be the optimistic one now. I know, I'm ending with an optimistic story. Okay. And then, you know, you're got, pacing yourself. It's a mixed report. <laughs> Start with so, a bad news. Um, in, uh, from North America in Baja, California, the governor rejects a decree that prohibits efforts to correct um, sexual orientation and gender identity. So there's a conversion therapy outfit, and the um, legislature voted uh, 20 to 4 
to put it out of business. And the governor, uh, instead of publishing it, actually she's the president, she announced that she's going to return it to Congress for revisions. Part of it was that she got it and made suggestions and they ignored her suggestions. This is my personal take on it. Um, but there's a lot of quibbling about consent and so forth. Um, but we'll see actually what she suggests. We have to wait and find out the modifications proposed by the governor of Baja, California. And if Congress defends the reform, it approved to ban this group. So there's a little uh, controversy there. Uh, in South America, I have mixed news. Uh, the Inter-American Court rules in favor of a lesbian religion teacher in Chile. And I have a picture before you now. Her name is Sandra Pavez Pavez. Uh, she was fired in 2007. She was a religion teacher. She worked as a Catholic religion teacher and had done it since 1985 at Colegio Municipal Cardinal Antonio Samor Samoriz in San Bernardo, a city just south of Santiago. The Catholic Church in 2007 revoked her certification that the Chilean Ministry of Education required for her to work as a religion teacher. She came out after a rumor began to circulate that she was involved with a woman. Uh, the clergy acted under a 1983 decree uh, of the Pinochet, the notorious Pinochet uh, government. Um, and she also refused to undergo psychological and <laughs> psychiatric therapy that the church offered. Which would have been conversion therapy. No Probably. No. Uh, Chile's main LGBTQ rights group appealed the decision, it was rejected, and finally the Supreme Court upheld the ruling. Both Chilean courts ruled that she had not suffered discrimination, uh, so the Inter-American Court of Human Rights finally granted her appeal. Um, as part of the resolution, the court offered comprehensive reparation measures to include a public act of recognition of international responsibility and guarantees of non-repetition. So this is a big deal, a breakthrough. Chile is also required to amend its policies towards educational institutions, pay Pavez $35,000 in material and non-material damages and another $30,000 in costs and expenses. She retired in January without being able to return to the classroom. Uh, it was 15 years of struggle after my country denied me the right to practice the profession I studied and loved so much. I regret that the discrimination I suffered at the hands of the church and the Supreme Court was accompanied by the total silence of successive governments in Chile, which never showed solidarity with my cause. I trust that the current government will turn things around and fully comply with the sentence. Um, the court has been clear that the state cannot discriminate, activists say, but of course this woman's career was ruined. So, yeah. you know, co monetary compensation is good, and the, of course the, the ruling is good, but, you know, the damage, a lot of damage was done to her personally. Um, now I have a picture from Uruguay of the first transgender lawmaker, Michelle Suarez, who has just died at 39. Uh, she was the first openly transgender lawmaker. Um, in 2014, she won a seat in the Uruguayan Senate. She was an altern or alternative senator without full voting privileges until October 2017. So she had kind of a checkered career. She was the first trans woman to graduate from a Uruguayan university and the first trans lawyer in the country. She wrote Uruguay's same-sex marriage law that took effect in 2013. Mm -hmm. So that's really her signal accomplishment. She resigned in December uh, 2017 amid allegations that she forged legal documents. Um, in 2019, a court in 2019 sentenced her to two years of house arrest and two years of probation. Mm -hmm. She was also banned from holding public office and working as a lawyer until 2023. 
and uh, she had been in the hospital with a cardiac problem oh. when she died. So it's a shame that her career was tarnished by these fraud charges and, you know, in any of a, she's a trailblazer. Asia, good and bad news. I have two stories. The good news is South Korea's Supreme Court throws out the conviction of two gay soldiers. This, and I reported on this at the time. Two gay men had sex consensually off a military base. Um, and the court said that the conviction by a military tribunal stretched the reading of the controversial anti-sodomy law that's applicable to military personnel. Under South Korea's Military Criminal Act, anal intercourse or other indecent acts is punishable with up to two years in prison. Jeez. These two gay soldiers, uh, it's the first time that a South Korean court has disagreed with the application of the law. In 2016, the couple, a first lieutenant and master sergeant, were charged after they were found to have had sex in a private house outside their military bases. The court sentenced the first lieutenant to four months in prison and the master sergeant to three months. Both sentences were suspended. Why different? The uh, Supreme Court said that the law could, could not have been applied in the case as the Consensual Sex Act did not occur at a military facility. The view that sexual activity between people of the same sex is a source of humiliation and disgust for objective and regular people goes against the decent moral sense, the law said. Oh, dear. Um, in a press release, the court said the decision was important as the declaration that consensual same-sex sexual activity among military service members could no longer be considered as punishable in and of itself. According to Amnesty International, South Korea has in the recent pa past charged more than 20 gay soldiers under a military oh. sodomy law for consensual sex. This uh, decision, therefore, is groundbreaking. Do they get thrown out of the service, too? No, I don't think so. Homosexuality is legal in South Korea, but there are no laws to protect LGBTQI people from discrimination or hate crimes. Mm -hmm. South Korea does not recognize same-sex marriages, and in January 2022, a court dismissed a petition filed by a gay couple for their relationship to be recognized. Mm -hmm. Still, good news from South Korea. Now, um, may I go to Saudi Arabia? Is it a, is it a long one? It's of interest. It's, <laughs> well, I know it's... <laughs> Dr. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. You may wonder what that is. Uh -huh. it's, a movie. it's a movie. Yeah. It's banned in Saudi Arabia due to a gay character. I mm -hmm. have that on my list of things here. You, you want to cover it? No, go ahead. Um, Doctor Strange in the multi -universe, Multiverse of Madness won't be playing in Saudi Arabia or several other Arab countries due to the inclusion of a gay character. No, I just have it listed as interesting movies. Well, I, have, I can <laughs> tell you chapter and verse about the plot. No. But Saudi Arabian censors did not issue a permit to release the film in the kingdom since the, char the changes they requested were not approved by Disney, according to a source. Yeah. Good for Din Disney. Yeah. It uh, stars Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch as the titular mm -hmm. character and yeah. features a new hero, America Chavez, played by the Babysitter's Club, Sochil Gomez. Her character in the movie is reportedly gay, true to how she is portrayed in Marvel Comics. The Doctor Strange sequel, which will be released in the U.S. on May 6th, was initially slated for release in Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries on May 5th. But in the region, movies concerning or containing sex, homosexuality, and religious issues are routinely cut to comply with censorship rules. Uh, in this case, Disney was either unwilling or unable to make the edits requested by the censors. Censorship in Saudi Arabia has recently also kept local audiences from watching Marvel's Eternals after Disney refused to make edits that included the picture's same-sex kiss and West Side Story because it features a transgender character. 
But this is not a problem that's specific to Saudi Arabia. Advanced ticket sales of Doctor Strange sequel are not available in Saudi, Kuwait, and Qatar. They're on sale at the, in the United Arab Emirates, Emirates, indicating that the film will be released there since censorship in the Emirates has recently become less restrictive. Now, I have a little paragraph of plot summary, but I guess I'll have to no. forego it. Keith. In talking about your plot summaries, on our next show, I will be talking about what our Vermont legislature did and did not do, because as was announced within the last 24 hours, they will not be adjourning this week. They're hoping to adjourn next week. And I'll also be talking about some of the recent US Supreme Court decisions. And waiting may be advantageous because there are several other cases for whom arguments have already been presented and they're waiting for the ruling, so we may have more to talk about. But looking at fun stuff, because we need some fun stuff, the Vermont Book Awards <coughs> are back. And we want to acknowledge that the person who was granted the award for creative nonfiction was Alison Bechtel oh. for The Secret to Superhuman Strength. And there was a festival at the Vermont um, College for Fine Arts. Huh presenting the award. It's election year. Brenda Churchill, I announced on our last show, mm -hmm. had formally announced for the Franklin Six seat. Well, Brenda's announcement came on the same day that we learned of Fern Feathers uh -huh. killing. So there will be another more formal announcement forthcoming. However, there is a website if people are interested in the candidacy. Didn't they have some function? I didn't no, 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 it's coming up. It's going to be at one of the town halls up in her district. Yeah, but I saw a picture of Brenda at the Rusty Nail. What is that place on something nail? Nails in um, Montpelier. Montpelier? Yeah. No that, that, no, that was a party fundraiser. It wasn't specifically okay. for Brenda. But Brenda's <laughs> not the only out candidate that's announced. Witchy R2 has announced that he is running for the Wyndham County Senate seat being vacated by Becca Ballant. Uh -huh. Who? Witchy R2. Witchy R2 and his husband are organic farmers committed to LGBTQ plus BIPOC community. Mm. People may know uh, which he from the summit that Out in the Open has sponsored. Mm -hmm. They have been very active in the community in the Brattleboro area. Which is the person who did all of the work on the LGBTQ plus healthcare initiatives at Brattleboro Hospital and Grace Cottage oh. Hospital that got the attention and recognition <coughs> from the Human Rights Campaign as one of the best in the country. Oh. So great. All right. So that's good news, I guess. Yeah, oh no, that's excellent news. But going on from that, it's hate in our backyard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The Pride Center in Burlington. There was an act of vandalism where during the night someone approached the building and threw two concrete projectiles through the door and shattered it. And the community around them has rallied for them. And there has already been an anonymous donor who has said, I'm giving you the money to repair the door. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to endure this. And this was the statement from Mike Bensel, the executive director. I just want to recognize that the community, the LGBTQ plus, is resilient and we are strong and our response to this type of violence is to respond with love and beauty. And there were various entities who have done fundraising special efforts to support the Pride Center. One is the Fox Market in East Montpelier. The other is the Poppy Cafe and Market, which is on Oak Street in Burlington, and the Red Wagon Plants in Heinsburg. And I mentioned them because even though their immediate fundraising may have ended, these are businesses that were supportive. We should in turn support them. Yep. But Burlington wasn't alone. 
Northern Vermont University in Lindenville. Last Friday, they put up an inclusion flag in front of their LGBTQ plus organization. And over the weekend, the flagpole was broken, vandalized, and the flag was stolen. Mm. So, and this was the response from Alexa Morrigan, who is their coordinator for their inclusion club. It's everywhere. My response to the school is that we're not going away. And my response to the state is, we're not going away. We're here to stay. So get ready. May I say something? I read a coverage of all of this stuff in Vice News, and they attributed this new, this uptick in Vermont to Laura Ingraham's oh, yeah. story exactly. about the gender right. workshop. Where at the high school in Laura time, Ingram right? took the online training and edited it and threw it out on a national. Yeah. And then the chair of the GOP here in Vermont yeah. mm -hmm. used it for their own fundraising efforts. And when it exceeded what he could control, he didn't know how to pull it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but, and I'm going to look really quickly in New Hampshire. And this is a piece of legislation that people have missed. House Bill 1431. This is parental rights. And get ready to the language. And it is about, I want to get, preserving a parent's rights. And the way it's drafted is that they find it is the fundamental right of parents to direct the upbringing, education, and care of their minor children. So that's like, okay, so now you can ban books because it's parental, right? Well, no, th I want you to listen to the language, right. which, no, 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 no. <laughs> if you were a parent, oh, you're saying that I should have something to say about right. mm -hmm. my child. Use, well, of though. course I'm going to support it. So the language is broad enough that it's like, oh, well, of course. But then it starts talking about a school or the state cannot do anything to infringe upon your rights. Mm -hmm. And they start putting in modifying language, and I have a copy of the actual bill. And this is where it really started getting rocky, is if my child goes in and says something to the faculty that is an indicator of a change in mental health or that they are to notify the parents immediately. Mm -hmm. So I go into school and reveal sexual orientation or gender identity to who I think is the supportive faculty. They, in turn, have to call my parent. Mm -hmm. They don't have the right to hold it confidential. And that's where... It's the back door. Let's trick people into voting for this. And this is, this is the model that Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill was modeled after. So mm -hmm. getting ready, because there are 12 other states actively considering this. Mm -hmm. And this just passed mm -hmm. in New Hampshire. It passed in the House on a 181 to 157 vote. It passed in the Senate on a 13 to 11 vote. Mm. Every sponsor was a Republican. Everyone who voted in favor of the bill was a Republican. Everyone who voted against it was a Democrat, with the exception of one Republican. Mm. So, and then just uh, to men who have sex with men out there. <laughs> the, the, well, no, the Centers for Disease Control is saying that there is a major outbreak. Not just in Florida? Well, in, and the reason I'm saying it here is this is vacation time. Mm -hmm. This was spring break. We had people in Florida. This is about getting vaccinated for meningitis, uh, for metacochal meningitis, mm -hmm. which can have devastating impact. So if, if you are a man who has sex with men who has either vacationed recently in Florida or is going. You, know, you, you are, have close contact with someone who has be looking for symptoms of fever, headache, stiff neck, nausea, vomiting, and get health care immediately, if you're thinking of vacationing, 
in Florida in the near future. Please get vaccinated before you go. Okay. And they have no idea, huh, why that kind of started in Florida. Oh, Florida's, I mean, anytime there are large groups of people, particularly students on spring break. Yeah. I mean, that's a prime Everything happens. Yeah. opportunity. Okay, well, we have Ellen G. Generous, who, believe it or not, 25 years ago, mm -hmm. she came out on her sitcom mm -hmm. called Ellen. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Yes. It was very groundbreaking. She, she won was Ellen Morgan. She won the toaster oven. And Yes. And when she came out, people warned her, of course, that she would ruin her career. She said that she didn't really have a job or much to do for three years after that. But all she has to say is, look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> so, that. And rights of Nature Law Clinic faces transphobia allegations. The law clinic spearheaded um, campaigns to establish legal rights for lakes and rivers. Last summer, seven of 15 staffers and contract attorneys left, saying that the organization resisted efforts to make the workplace more inclusive, including LGBTQ people. So, hmm. so I guess you can be trying to Help the save trees, but... Apple is quietly mobilizing its vast resources to lobby against anti-LGBTQ legislature across the country. Oh, good, because we have all these Apple products. I know. An unusual push by one of the world's most valuable companies into a consequential political debate. The company's CEO, Tim Cook, is the nation's, uh, one of the nation's most gay executives. Has, most gay? He's gay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Executive has... Um, deployed its lobbyists to oppose legislation that limits protections for trans and gay people and their families. Good. So that's good news. We have a good product then. Mm -hmm. Director Kate Lynch says she was opened up to horror by Carrie, which was the movie, if you remember, from a Stephen King novel. The Body Horror in the Shower the insecurity and rage. This is what she said. I felt so connected to her. I never forgot the palpitations in my chest. It was an emotional catharsis. That's when I realized that horror could be a healthy way to face my darkness. She began doing films after the 1916 election in October. 1916. No, 2016, sorry. Got it, okay. <laughs> election. In October, LGBTQ horror fans, fans include So Vam, Alone With You, Bad Girls, and Brain Dead at the Cinema Salem this year. There will be virtual programs streaming. The festival is in the first week of October. So there's that. I'm going to use my I'm going to use my parental rights on what she's viewing. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> She'll be watching them alone. I know. University of South Carolina settles lawsuit involving 80 men who accused a doctor of sexual misconduct. Former students, many gay, accused Dr. Dennis Kelly of misconduct. Terms of the central settlement that they made have not been disclosed. Oh, I know. Um, activists file a complaint in Florida over the Bible being too woke. Chaz Sanchez is using <laughs> Florida GOP Stop Woke Act to prove the Bible's inclusion of tox topics like racism, sexism, and homophobia makes it inappropriate for the classroom. <laughs> and then there's uh, one of the movies after the, you know, we're talking about, um, so there's 17 films and TV shows which begin in May. I picked a few that I liked, but if you, you can find them online. And some of them are The Staircase, based on a true story about the death of Kathleen Peterson, Star Trek, Strange New Worlds. 
These are LGBTQ yes. films? Yes, that's why I would be reporting oh, on Oh, okay. <laughs> or they've got characters that would yes. be of interest to us. Yes. I see. Anna's in love. A woman falls in love with her lover's partner. That should be pretty interesting. <clears throat> lover is a man, and you know, anyway. And Doctor Strange. Oh. The gosh. Marvel gets gayer. Uh -huh. So... There. I'd love to just read the plot summary of that right well, now. Well, you know. It involves Spider-Man. <laughs> Kansas anti-trans bill officially did. Yeah. So we have that. Okay, so Ian, I think we can move on to you now. I thought you'd be particularly interested. I am particularly in interested. In connection. I am. I'm going to watch it. All right. Uh, let's go to bad news from Africa. A non-binary lesbian was reportedly raped and killed by a group of men. I have a picture before you now. Sheila Adhiambo Ad Lumumba, 25. She was, they were found in their home by colleagues after they didn't show up for work. LGBTQ Ugh. rights in Ken, Ken, groups in Kenya are demanding justice over the killing of this non-binary lesbian. Queer activists have said they were found murdered in their home after being attacked and raped by a group of men. The killing happened uh, about three hours north of the country's capital. According to an autopsy report, a group of men broke into her house and raped them before killing them. Their body was discovered um, days after their death by colleagues uh, at the resort where they worked after they failed to show up for a couple of days. On social media, many have used um, a hashtag to call for authorities to appropriately investigate the death and find those responsible. Um, a memorial will occur on um, April 30th. It bears mentioning that unfortunately these are not isolated incidences and are part of a pattern of attacks and violence against LGBTQ plus persons in the country. Um, the group wrote, wrote on Twitter offering resources, uh, this is a rights group, to queer Kenyans. Last year, um, the, this, these hashtags were trending after the murders of a trans woman and activist Erica Chandra and LGBTQ plus activist Hoash Masoti, the BBC reports. Same-sex relations are still illegal in Kenya, and LGBTQ plus individuals face discrimination and social stigma. Uh, Kenya's high court ruled in 2019 against overturning a law banning gay sex. It carries a punishment of up to 14 years in prison if violated. While the law is specific to same-sex sexual relations between men, Kenyan activists still say it affects lesbian, bi, trans, and non-binary people and creates an environment where anti-LGBTQ plus attitudes thrive. So that's terrible news. Um, let's go to Russia. No. Where Meta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not going to Russia. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I have to say there are two stories from Russia. Mm -hmm. um, Neither of them particularly affirming. Uh, Russia finds Meta, which is uh, formerly Facebook, mm -hmm. platform over, quote, LGBTQ plus propaganda. The Russian court on Tuesday fined Meta platforms 4 million rubles for failing to delete posts that contain what it calls LGBTQ plus propaganda. In 2013, uh, a 2013 Russian law decried by Western countries as state-enforced bigotry, bans the promotion of non-traditional sexual relations to minors. Meta did not immediately respond. In further acts of skullduggery, a Russian court has dissolved an LGBTQ rights group. It's called Sphere. I've mentioned it before on the show. It provided legal psychological assistance across the country. Last week, a district court in St. Petersburg ordered that the charitable foundation be liquidated. In February, uh, the Russian Justice Ministry filed a lawsuit trying to liquidate it. Oxymoron. Mm -hmm, right. Uh, it argued that the group's uh, activities ran contrary to traditional values. 
uh, on April 21st, a judge ruled in favor of the ministry's argument uh, that it ran country to, contrary to the Russian state policy to preserve, expand, and develop the country's human capital. Uh, the ministry also accused it of spreading LGBTQ views and working with people under the age of 18 um, and to um, act in violation of the country's gay propaganda law. Uh, this group was founded in 2011 by Russian LGBTQ rights activist Igor Kochetov, and in 2016, authorities designated the Sphere Foundation a foreign agent, and from there on, a decline occurred. Um, upon learning of the ruling, the founder said, no, I am not crying or crying or crying. I'm proud of the work done by the foundation in 11 years. It should be clear that the ministry and the court made this decision, and it is not on legal but on an ideological basis. No Russian law prohibits the activity of organizations that do not correspond with any values. There is simply no such basis in the law for liquidation of NGOs. In this sense, the decision of the court is iconic. Mandatory state ideology has returned and is now official. And then he added, the work continues. Their hands are dirty, but too short to ban us. So uh, Sphere released a, a longer statement. And in more dirty deeds, uh, the Russian ministry canceled the registration of Human Rights Watch along with Amnesty International and 13 other offices of foreign non-governmental organizations and foundations. Wow. Human Rights Watch had maintained an office in Russia for 30 years. The action was announced just days after the appeals court upheld the liquidation of another Russian human rights giant memorial. Human Rights Watch has been working on and in Russia since the Soviet era, and we will continue to do so the executive director said, this new Iron Curtain will not stop our ongoing efforts to defend the rights of all Russians and to protect civilians in Ukraine. So they're going to fight despite this awful crackdown. Um, mixed news from Hungary, which is kind of trying to borrow um, the playbook from Russia. Uh, Hungarian groups, however, are fighting the fines um, that groups have received for supporting LGBTQ rights. I mentioned the election and how um, voters were counseled to kind of sabotage yeah, to, the yeah. ballot. Um, and last week, Hungary's Supreme Court rejected, this is really mixed news though, an attempt to levy punitive fines on 16 civil society organizations for opposing the referendum. Nevertheless, the court upheld fines against two groups, setting a dangerous precedent for curtailing civil society advocacy. Mm -hmm. The National Election Committee subsequently fined the groups for encouraging invalid votes, arguing that they abused the electoral process. Hungary's Supreme Court, the Curia, rejected that argument in three of the five cases, finding that the voters had the right to cast an invalid vote and that organizations had not livered, limited voters' autonomy to make that choice. In two other cases, however, another Curia Council upheld the fines against Hatter, a lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender rights group, and Amnesty International Hungary, so they're going after Amnesty International. Both groups have said they plan to appeal the decision to Hungary's constitutional court, and I hope they succeed. Do you have a clip? Because we're getting close to the end of your time here. Well, I have a couple stories. Let's, well, I don't know that we have time for a couple of more stories. Well, let's look at a picture now of Aidan Moffat and Michael Snee on the left. They are two gay men who were murdered in Ireland, the pillars of the community. They weren't activists, and they were um, murdered by uh, Yusuf Polani, a 22-year-old man from Sligo, which is where this all occurred. He was charged with the murders of both men, 
and was remanded to custody. And it's very creepy because re it's related to Grinder. And this guy had a list, and these wow. two were the first pe two people wow. on it. Not only were they murdered, they were mutilated. Um, so now let me go to my clip, traveling through generations, Petite Maman. <laughs> Petite Maman by lesbian director Celine Sharma <coughs> begins in a nursing home with a scene bringing together three generations, elderly women, mothers, and their daughters. Nellie goes from room to room, reading elderly women, her mother, Marion, is seeing her own mother in the final days of her life. After the death of Nellie's grandmother, her family temporarily relocates to her house in order to empty it out. While her mother and father are busy, Nellie plays in the woods. She comes across another young girl building a tree fort. This girl turns out to be Marion, back when she was the same age as Nellie. Marion is Nellie's mother. The two bond immediately, but the time in which they can spend together is limited. I have another paragraph I'd love to share you about with well, you about. Well, look, we only Celine have five Shino. minutes left. All right, let's look at a clip of <laughs> Petite Maman. C'est quoi? C'est mes trucs d'enfant. Elle avait tout gardé. Tu n'étais pas la reine de l'orthographe. Maman, tu as fusé où ta cabane? Dans les bois, juste derrière. Ça te fait de la peine d'être ici. Je vous aimais bien cette chambre. Moi aussi, je suis triste. Elle a préféré partir ce matin. On a décidé que ce serait mieux comme ça. J'ai une mission pour toi. Le placard dans le couloir. Comme ça, on part vite d'ici, puis on la retrouve. Tu viens m'aider Je t'avais jamais vu avant. Tu m'as pas dit comment tu t'appelais Lenny. Je suis chez ma grand-mère. Elle est morte la semaine dernière. J'aime bien faire des petites tines de chocolat et les manger. J'ai retrouvé l'endroit de la cabane de maman. On ne parlait jamais de quand vous étiez enfant. T'exagères, on te raconte tout le temps. Oui, mais c'est que des petites histoires. J'ai un secret. Je suis ton enfant. Tu viens du futur. Tu seras d'accord pour que je dorme chez elle Quand Je sais pas, elle m'a pas encore invité. All right, I want to see that. Okay. What is it on? Okay, where can you see it? Well, it's uh, premiering in French with English subtitles. It opens on April 22nd at Angelica Film Center and Film at Lincoln Center. Sounds good. Yeah, so you have to, it'll appear in general circulation mm -hmm. pretty Eventually. soon. One more last story. It's a... <laughs> Involving a picture. This is Stephen Carter and Eric Bourne. They're um, the first same-sex marriage in UK's uh, Antarctic territory. Yes. Um, they got married on board the ship RRS Sir David Attenborough. It's the first same-sex wedding to take place on British Antarctic territory and they're very excited the captain they look presided very cute. 30 crew members attended and they're going to have a big celebration in Spain where one of them lives at a later date okay but right. what was truly newsworthy about this is when this marriage occurred in Antarctica we now have had a same sex marriage in every continent in the world well three cheers yay that's um, positive yeah, it's very positive. Thank you. My great pleasure. Keith. So, I said you should know the answer to this. This was the first openly LGBTQ plus Asian Pacific Islander elected to the Congress. And I say that because every May since this show has been on air, the answer has been Mark Takano. <laughs> who is from California's 41st Congressional District. He is not only the first, he is the only openly LGBTQ plus Asian Pacific Islander elected to the U.S. Congress. And a piece of Mark, Mark's 
personal history is he is of Japanese descent and his family <coughs> was interned during World War II in the desert for being Japanese. So in addition to his identity as part of the LGBTQ plus community, he brings that personal family history with him. So. And I just wanted to say in the last few minutes that we have here is, uh, you know, the the abortion and the letter that was leaked and, you know, that we really need to be... The draft. We really need to be watching this uh, because if this goes over, lots of other things can go over too, like gay marriage and, and other things. So we, we, we really need to be paying attention. And so now it's more important than ever to resist. resist.